Hello and welcome back. Very early on in the Transformers franchise, the idea of robots in disguise was tossed aside, with the introduction of characters like the Dinobots and the Insecticons. Hard to stay disguised when you have giant robot dinosaurs and insects running around. In the post-Transformers the movie world, Transformers having alt modes of strange creatures became more and more common, such as the kaiju-like Terracons, the aquatic Seacons, and the bizarre Firecons. While most of these creatures were allied with the Decepticons, there was one group that fought on the side of the Autobots. Introduced in 1987, they were the Monster Bots. Rodimus Quint, there's been an accident. The new Autobots are Monster Bots. They're monsters, all right. Decepticons. Monster Bots, attack. I'm glad those monsters are on our side. The Transformers, more, much more than meets the eye. And they've even got sparks blasting out of them. You can't stop the Monster Bots. The Transformers. The Transformers Monsterbot sold separately from Hasbro. The three members of the Monsterbot team were Grotusk, a military strategist who was a skilled warrior in battle, but often treated everything as a joke. He transformed into a bipedal saber-toothed tiger creature with dragon wings. Doublecross, a two-headed dragon whose function was supply procurement. Double Cross was highly unreliable, because he was literally of two minds about everything. When you made a deal with one of his heads, the other head was likely to break it. And Repugnus, an insect-like creature whose function was counterintelligence. Repugnus had a personality that was as repellent as his looks. He was kicked off the Autobot team many times for insubordination, only to be asked back because he was one of the few that would take on the dirty missions that other Autobots didn't want. The original Generation 1 Monsterbots all shared a similar gimmick, that of a flint wheel inside their bodies that would cause sparks to shoot out when it was spun. The overall characterization of the three Monsterbots was that they were highly unpredictable, even more so than the Dinobots. Despite being on the side of the heroic Autobots, they were very difficult to deal with. Growing up, I was a monster kid, and I always enjoyed getting new monster toys. So the strange creatures that inhabited the Transformers line in their later years, especially the Monster Bots, were favorites of mine. So I was very happy when the Monster Bots were brought back as part of the Transformers Titans Return toy line. Double Cross was the first Monster Bot to be reimagined for the Titans Return toy line. Due to a loss of copyright on the original name, Double Cross was renamed to Twinferno. Two major changes from the original Generation 1 toy. The sparking flint wheel gimmick is gone, and the new figures have been reimagined as Headmasters, or as they're called in the Titans Return toy line, Titan Masters. Each creature comes with a smaller figure that transforms into the head when they are in robot mode and the heads can store in a compartment inside their bodies when they're in creature mode. So this Double Cross, aka Twinferno, has a couple of different joints in his dragon necks, as well as opening and closing jaws. And these jaws act as his hands in robot mode. He can move his arms up and down. And you can see the arms on the dragon are very organic looking rather than robot looking. In fact, the original Generation 1 Double Cross was the first Transformer to incorporate organic looking parts into their alt modes. His wings can move back and forth, and his robot mode gun can clip on the back of the creature. He has movement in his hips, his knees, and his feet. Although the way the creature is designed, the hips are a little finicky, because they do come apart for transformation and they don't clip in all that securely. Here he is in robot mode with his headmaster installed, Autobot symbol on his chest. The weapons can split apart into two individual guns or you can keep them combined. And like his generation one counterpart, he has a couple of peg holes on the side of his dragon heads 
to peg in the guns, since the dragon heads become hands, they would be unreliable for holding his weapons. Grotusk is an extensive retool of Twinferno. The original Grotusk was always my favorite monster bot due to his bizarre creature mode, a combination of a dragon and a saber-toothed tiger. Also always really liked the coloring on this figure with the gray, off-white, and magenta working really well together with splashes of blue. Grow Tusk in robot mode. And I like how they're able to integrate all the beast parts into the robot mode. So for the most part, there's not a whole lot of kibble hanging off them. And finally, the alien insect looking repugnous. Once again, a heavy retool of that same mold. I know some collectors were disappointed that the monster bots did not all get individually tooled new molds, but I think in modern toy making with so much reuse of parts and molds, that's probably unrealistic. So I think the heavy retooling is a good compromise. I especially like the translucent green bits on Repugnus. Makes him look even more monstrous than his two teammates. Another great looking, unique color scheme on Repugnus with the yellow, red, white, brown, and those splashes of translucent green. And rather than guns, he has been given brand new weapons. These sword-like weapons attached to his back when he's in beast mode and look like wings. Due to the cancellation of the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon, the monster bots never appeared in animation in the US. However, that was not the case in Japan, where the Transformers went on to star in several different animated series set in the Generation 1 continuity. The first of those being the Headmasters, with the monster bots making their animated debut in the Headmasters episode Rebellion on Planet Beast. In this episode, the Autobots are called to aid the citizens of Planet Beast, a group of animal-like warriors called the Beast Formers. The Decepticons have invaded the Planet Beast and have enslaved its citizens, with the help of some evil Beast Formers who have allied themselves with the Decepticons. After successfully repelling the Decepticon invaders, Autobot leader Rodimus Prime orders the Monster Bots to stay on Planet Beast to defend the world in case the Decepticons decide to return. A decision that the Monster Bots are quite happy with, since they have come to like it on Planet Beast. In Japan, Takara created a series of Beast Former toys, which were marketed as a spin-off of the Transformers series. However, when Hasbro adopted those toys for the American market, they did so without any connection to the Transformers, and they renamed the line Battle Beasts. Here is an example of one of the original Battle Beasts released by Hasbro. These figures are about two inches tall and only have two points of articulation with the arms being able to go up and down. Each figure had a unique melee weapon that they were packed in with, and each of those weapons had a number printed on it. The Battle Beasts also had numbers printed on them, with this one being number seven. So if you ever have a lot of loose Battle Beasts and weapons, you can just look at the numbers printed on the figures and the weapons to match them up. The Battle Beasts were released mostly in two packs, and they did not have individual names. But Hasbro did name them, with the names appearing on a mail-away promotional poster that Hasbro offered. The poster acted as a checklist, with the name and number of each beast appearing under the illustrations of each character. This one I have here is number seven, named Horny Toad. 
In Japan, his name was Drill Frog. Along with the figures, Hasbro also released three battle chariots, as well as three larger base vehicles. Transport vehicles that change into battle stations. The Beetle, Firebird, and Shark. Battle Beast. And to carry your army, there's the Bandolier. Let's battle! Wood! Fire! Fire Beast! Wood! Battle Beast can grow into an army. Bandolier, chariots, and transports, each sold separately. Battle Beast! Unfortunately, no tie-in cartoon was made for the Battle Beasts. So while fondly remembered by fans of the line, they remain among one of the many, many, many toy lines of the 80s that never received the notoriety that G.I. Joe, Transformers, and He-Man did. Although it is missing from this example, each battle beast had on its chest a heat-activated rub sign. The same type that appeared on the first couple of waves of Hasbro's Transformers. Activating that rub sign would reveal one of three symbols. Fire, wood, or water. This added a game element to the figures, as these three symbols would work the same as the classic rock, paper, scissors game. Water beats fire, fire beats wood, and wood beats water. In 2012, Takara revisited the idea of the Battle Beasts, creating a new version of them that would include toys, manga, a video game from Nintendo, and an anime series. This new iteration was called Beast Saga. Beast Saga was never released officially in America, but the Japanese releases were readily available through online e-tailers that import Japanese toys, like Big Bad Toy Store. Some of the Beast Saga figures were released individually, and others were released in box sets, which were usually divided into air, land, or sea creatures. The Beast Saga figures that I have in my collection include this land animal set with the tiger, cat, and panda, a bird set with an eagle, a falcon, and a very dangerous looking pigeon, and this ocean predator set featuring a shark, a piranha, and a coelacanth. I also picked up some individually carded figures, including this giraffe, an elephant, a pretty cool looking bat and a lion. In comparison with an original Battle Beast, the Beast Saga figures are a bit taller and beefier. They each come with two accessories, that being a weapon as well as a shield. And instead of just the arms being articulated, they also have movable legs. Replacing the rub sign fire water wood gimmick, the gaming component of B Saga is now created with dice that launch out of their chests via this push lever that is installed on each figure. Push on the back of the figure, and the die launches out. Unfortunately, I don't know how exactly you win the game, since these figures were imports and all the instructions are in Japanese. If you're a fan of the original Battle Beasts, these Beast Saga figures are a really nice update on the original toys. The original Monster Bots and Battle Beasts were some of my favorite toys in my original collection. So when I started collecting again, I knew I wanted to add these modern versions to Collection 2.0. I hope you enjoyed that look at these monstrous and beastly toys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.